so glad you're here. Uh, welcome to our Thanksgiving Eve slash baptism service. Uh, we're going to begin with word of the Lord, um, Psalm 136. Will you stand? Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who by understanding made the heavens, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who spread out the earth above the waters, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who made the great lights, for his steadfast love endures forever. The sun to rule the day, for his steadfast love endures forever. The moon and the stars to rule over the night, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let's sing it out. Thanks to the Lord. thanks to you because you are so worthy of it. Your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your justice, your righteousness, your holiness. We come and we praise you and this, this time, this season, this week we've set aside as a time to give thanks. And a lot of that is related to, to all of the practical benefits and the freedoms we share in this nation and it, reflecting back on, on those um, distant days gone by, uh, Lord, we, we come and we continue in this tradition of setting aside a time to give thanks to you. And Father, we, we recognize that there is a deeper thanks, and that is for such a great salvation that you've given us. Oh God, you are a good, good Father, and we worship you tonight. Amen. Amen.
seated. As I said, this is our uh, Thanksgiving Eve slash um, baptism service. And uh, I always like to do this before we do a baptism because I know sometimes we have visitors that don't understand how we do things, why we do things. And um, I just wanted to prepare you so that when I put that person underwater, you're not calling 911 on me. Um, but anyway, we uh, at Sun Prairie uh, just find it a great privilege to baptize believers in Jesus Christ, to celebrate the goodness of God and what he has done in an individual's life. Our primary focus tonight is giving thanks to God. And we take time to sing of his, our, our gratefulness to God. We, we, we share. We're going to give you the opportunity in a little bit to share. Anyone can share. Everyone can share. Um, our service is brief tonight, except for that part. We want that to be a more extended time when you speak, when you speak of the things that you are thankful for. Um, and so we're going to get to that. But before that, in just a moment, we're going to hear from Grace Lewis, and she's going to share her testimony with us. It was supposed to be Grace and two others, but the two others got sick on us. And so I'm going to leave the water in there. Don't anyone drain the tank tonight, because on Sunday morning, if they're feeling well, we'll do that on Sunday. All right, so... Um, be in prayer that, that they will um, get to feel better. So I, I have the great privilege of baptizing Grace. Uh, and I count that such a privilege. Um, I have baptized all of those Lewis kids, by the way. And, uh, and it, it is such a joy to be able to do that. And Grace is going to share her testimony in a moment, how God has rescued her from darkness to light. And then I will, I will baptize her. But before I do that, I want to explain why we do it the way we do it. We begin with the words of Jesus, where he told his disciples, go therefore into all the world and preach the gospel, make disciples, go make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So make disciples. Go preach the gospel. Take the message to people that they might be saved, that they might believe, that they might repent of sin and trust in Jesus. At, at Sun Prairie, we baptize because Jesus commanded his disciples to make more disciples and then to baptize them. We believe it's an ordinance or an action ordered by Christ. That's where that word ordinance comes from. It's an order. It's a command given to us that if we are believers, we should be baptized because... We're instructed in Scripture to do so. And we do it by immersion because the word immersion in the Greek literally means, or, or, or the word baptize in the Greek, baptizo, literally means to immerse, to put under, or in the water. We baptize by immersion because that is how Jesus was baptized. And we baptize by immersion because of the great symbolism embodied in it. As I dunk grace under the water, it symbolizes her death to the old self. It's a symbol of that. And as I raise her up out of the water, I promise I will, grace, um, don't worry about that. It, it is a symbol, a symbol of her new life, which has already taken place. It's already happened. And this is her way of publicly proclaiming that Christ has done this work in my life. He has saved me. And by his Holy Spirit living within me, I daily crucify the old self. And by his Spirit living in me, I live a new life. Baptism saves no one. For salvation comes by the grace of God, which we receive through faith, expressed in our repenting of sin and surrendering to Jesus, and believing in his work on the cross, his death, and his resurrection. Baptism is a way to publicly testify of what Christ has done. It is a way for us to publicly show that we have died to self and walk in newness of life through the indwelling spirit of God. So we thank God for the work that he has done in our lives. 
And I, I hope that you reflect tonight. You reflect on your own. For many of you who, here who have been baptized, you reflect on your own baptism and what Christ has done. So we thank God for that work. And we thank God for the work that he has done in grace and he will continue to do in the life of grace as, as she will share in her testimony of her surrender and commitment to him. We thank God that he has rescued her from sin and eternal death to new life. As she comes, I'd like us to pray. Father God, thank you for this privilege of baptizing grace, of the great symbolism that this represents. Thank you that you have given this to us as something that we can do to identify with you, our Savior, who died to self, but lives again and will live for all eternity. And someday, Lord, we look forward to the day when we too will join you in that place where you are and we'll join you and, and celebrate once again this new life in you. I pray for grace now as, as she is baptized, Lord, that this will just be a special remembrance for her and that she will look back on it often and see the commitment that she has made to see and be reminded of the work that you have done in her. In Jesus' name, amen. So Grace, share with us what God has done. Yeah, I want you to have a mic. Yep. Just don't take it into the water, okay? <laughs> All right. My name is Grace Lewis. I'm 17. And my um, testimony is that I grew up in the church all my life. And I knew about Christ all my life. And I don't remember the first time I confessed my um, sins and gave my life to Christ. But I did it at a very young age. And um, it was, and as I grew up in the church, so did my faith. And it wasn't truly until I went to Camp, camp Dutch in my fresh, freshman year that I heard the speaker there, and I decided that I wanted to give my 100% to Christ. And from that day forward, I wanted my identity to lie in him. So as you've shared with us your um, commitment to Jesus Christ and that you have confessed your sin to him, correct? Yes. And you have repented of your sin? Yes. And um, you have surrendered your life to Jesus, as you said, 100%. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. So if I do confession of faith, grace, it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. to expound on three of the things that I'm grateful for. Perhaps some of you guys have done this this year too, um, but here are the three things that, that I'm grateful for. Number one, my family and my community. My wife is a rock star, guys. Daily, she blows me away with how she tends to our son, tends to the house, and manages 
so many relationships with others. I moved her here barely a week after she had just given birth to our firstborn son. New community, new everything, and she's adapted to the way of life here so well. I'm so grateful for the way my wife cares for our household and blesses James and I. She is amazing. And speaking of housing, from the day my family moved here, the community was involved in our well-being. This community was involved in our well-being. When our water was being spotty, man, th there's so many people that, that have just helped with the upkeep of the house. Whether it was Pastor Mark, the Anderson family, the Norberg family, Pulse Electric, Iron Wheel, and countless other businesses and families who have helped us with our transition. We've been provided housing that has seriously blessed our family. My wife has been poured into by the woman of this church, and we have felt so loved by each and every one of you. Pastor Mark and he have been incredible mentors and friends to, to us the last three months, or not last, the last multiple months. I'm so grateful for the time and energy that they have poured into Ellie and I. We have found rest here, which has made it a sweet spot for us to just develop our young family. Thank you all for enabling this. The second thing I'm grateful for is my country. Many years ago, a group of pilgrims set sail from England for the new world in, in, in the United States, of what we know today, in hope of a new life. They did this primarily because of the rules regulating religious practices in England. See, those who do not subscribe to the state-instituted church and religious practices of the Church of England were considered English nonconformists. Has anyone heard that word before, English nonconformists? I didn't hear it until a couple, couple years ago. But these English nonconformists, if you were not conforming to the rules of the land, it was pretty broad sweeping. See, those who were registered members of the Church of England, which was basically anyone born and baptized in the Church of England, they weren't allowed to do commerce, marry, or even a church, attend the, the churches of nonconformists. So, as you can imagine, nearly everyone in England was baptized in the membership of the Church of England. So anyone who differed faced starvation because they couldn't do commerce, they couldn't buy anything, alienation because they couldn't have community within a local church, and ultimately extermination because if they couldn't marry, then how are they going to be able to raise a family in a way that would please the Lord? So those who disobeyed, disobeyed these laws were refused to baptize their children such as the earliest group of Baptists in England called the Particular Baptists, they would face a punishment called cropping, which is, in shorthand, facial mutilation. Others would be placed in prison with no way of getting food, water, or medical attention when the effects of starvation set in. Sunday church attendance was mandatory. If someone didn't show up, well, you did get fined severely. Now, I'm saying all these things, horrible things. Uh, all this is to say that when Christians made their pilgrimage to the new world, to America. It, it was so that they could flee these intense persecutions they faced. I was telling Ellie on the way here, I wonder what was going on in their mind. Or even the pioneers coming out west, knowing the consequences of what they were leaving, the security, the well-being, the welfare of the places, for unknowns. And they did it so that their future generations would prosper, so that their future generations would have hope for something better than what they had. And we're reaping the benefits of that today. And I'm grateful for that. Seeds of the American Baptist churches were founded here because of that, because of their obedience to that call. Finally, the third thing I'm grateful for is the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And this is by far the least and the, not the, the, the last and the greatest, the greatest of them. See, when one is in a position like the one Pastor Mark and I are in, to proclaim the teaching of the Bible, there's a certain clarity and blessing one has in what they share. Sunday school teachers, I'm sure you can relate to this. When you study the text, it dwells with you, doesn't it? It just settles. You know it. It's a deep blessing. So since being here, I can honestly say that I've been able to understand the gospel of Jesus Christ more clearly. I've been able to share it more passionately. This isn't because the gospel has changed but because it has grown sweeter every time I recognize my own depravity and how the need I have for a Savior is not just simply addressed, but lavishly provided for. See, Romans 5.8 says this. It says, but God shows his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, 
Christ died for us. Every time I have an unthought through word towards my wife, I am reminded of how evil I am, but also how great God's forgiveness is. As Pastor Mark shared last Sunday, God is completely and utterly holy, yet in his loving kindness, he stooped down to his creation that repelled against him. And the single greatest instance of injustice, all of man's sin was placed on the sinless one, Jesus. This means that no matter what we have done or ever will do, Jesus is able to forgive us our sin and bring us closer to himself. And this is such good news. This was done so that Christ and man could be reunited in eternity with one another. For anyone who believes that Jesus is God and repents of their sin, the benefits of the cross, namely life with God forever, are granted to us. What a sweet thing. This truth causes me to sing and share the good news with others. And it should for you too. And so as we prepare to sing these praises to the Lord, I just want you to take a minute and just to reflect on the things that you're grateful for. We're, and Pastor Mark said we're going to have a moment where we'll share this with everyone. You can, you can share what you're grateful for. So let's go into prayer, go into song, and then we'll share what we're grateful for. Lord, thank you for your salvation. Thank you for this community. Thank you for the faithful folks who, who traveled across the Atlantic all those years ago so that we might have a better future, so that their children might have a better future, Lord. Lord, thank you so much, not just for, for the sweet things this community has done, not just for the sweet things our ancestors have done, but Lord, ultimately what you have done for humanity by dying on the cross and raising again so that we can have life in you. Lord, we love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. How about we stand
grab a microphone. And Jaden, if you grab a microphone, uh, we'll take some time and just share. What are you thankful for this year? What are you thankful for, anyone? Who's going to be first? I love this part. Tell us your name. I'm Tyler Fawcett, and uh, I'm this uh, girl's boyfriend. Um, I guess uh, I'm just definitely thankful for this entire family and all their support through the highs and lows of everything this uh, life has to offer. So. Thanks for sharing, Tyler. It's like the second or third time the guy's been in church, and he's already sharing. Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> Give him a hand. Give him a hand for sharing. Lift your hand up and one of us will come to the microphone. I'm thankful for this church family and all the new friendships that I've made, all the women that I've met, and, and men, like Bob. <laughs> and also we are new great-grandparents, and I'm thankful for our new great-grandson. Amen. I once had to pray at a wedding uh, reception, and the DJ told me, take the mic, chin it to win it. I thought for a moment what that meant. He meant stick it to your chin so you can hear. All right. So anyone who gets a microphone, just hold it up close. I am thankful for my family, and I am thankful for the Bible and Jesus. Yeah. Um, first, I want to thank you all for um, your support this last several months. Your, the church family here has just been wonderful. And also, um, thank you for your prayers and supporting me in my ministry with CEF. That's been even aw very awesome, too, that you've come alongside me. Even though we don't go to church here, we haven't for 35 years since we were married, but I do appreciate that you support the ministry, and that you still support um, my loss. Thank you. I'm thankful for God dying on the cross for us.
thankful for the church and my family. thankful for these two boys, you two and their parents, and the opportunity that we get to share a meal together tomorrow. And um, I'm also just really grateful for the 50 plus women that come through um, that great room on Wednesdays, whether it's Wednesday morning or Wednesday evening. Um, I, just, I just love that opportunity and love uh, those women just so grateful for God's word and that um, we can dig into it together and um, it just uh, keeps keeps us growing so it's just really awesome well I was thinking I'm so thankful that we have kids to teach on Wednesday night and then I thought oh but Sunday school is so powerful then I thought oh Bible school is awesome and then I thought, right now I get to work with the kids with the Christmas program, and they're just alive with it. It's such a blessing to have the children. Thankful for my pastors. I am thankful for the nice weather. Uh, you never know what you're going to get in Minnesota or South Dakota this time of year, and we saw the most beautiful sunset driving here tonight, and it was awesome, so I'm thankful we made it safe and sound and we're able to come home. I'm thankful 32 years ago we had a son born today. Happy birthday, Bryce. I, I'm assuming that was you, yeah. <laughs> Just say it really loud, Jason. I'm really thankful for my wife and all that she does for our family and our two sweet kids. And I had the privilege to grow up in this church and I had a lot of awesome teachers and mentors along the way and it has been super special as a dad to watch our kids get to grow up in this church too and have awesome teachers and awesome mentors.
one of the things I'm thankful for is for those people who can't be here, they can't be at their home church this time of year, they can't be with their families because they have surrendered that to go to the other parts of the world, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm so, so thankful for those people that do that. getting cold. Just kidding. A couple more, a couple more, and then we will sing a song and uh, have a word of prayer and go and share in some great social time over some pie. Okay, Jean. Don't want to forget the um, musicians in our church. Our church has been blessed. Yes. Just thankful for the gift from God that they've been given to music. I'm thankful for that too, for the many. <laughs> yeah, and as pastor, I, I am every day thankful and pray for y'all every day, the, the teachers and the workers, the cooks, the, the many, many people, many, many volunteers it takes to do ministry in this community. Because, because of your work, because of your sacrifices, of time, uh, sometimes money, uh, because of that, people in our community get to learn and grow in Christ. They get to know him, they get to learn how to serve him, uh, and so, so grateful for that, for so many great volunteers. And I'm thankful for this pew full of people. Does this mean I guess so or yes? Please let me share. I'm thankful for you. Like you said, you baptized all my kids. <laughs> first in line downstairs. Okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, Kelly. I'm thankful for everybody who comes to church and gets to spread the good news to all those who are lost. Yeah. We're going to close out our time together singing the goodness of God. All my life, I love the chorus, all my life you've been faithful. All my life you've been so, so good. Let's, let's, let's sing it out, all right? Let's stand as we sing.
song ring in our heads tonight, tomorrow. May it be our refrain. I will sing of the goodness of God. For you are a good, good Father. A good and gracious Lord. Our Savior. Our Redeemer. Creator and, and guide. We love you because you have loved us. Go with us now. May this time of enjoying sweets and um, sweet fellowship bring you joy. <laughs>